Hey y'all, it's me, Grata Love. Um, I am making this video because there's a level of freedom that I have not given myself because of holding in certain parts of myself or certain pieces of my story. And I'm always talking about vulnerability and my dad is like, you need to practice what you preach when it comes to self-love and self-care and all these things. So now I am taking this moment to practice what I preach as far as vulnerability. I know I don't really um, share space. I don't really, I give everyone else emotional space. Let's just say that. And I want everyone else to pour in and like, you know, let it out. And so, this is a very vulnerable part. It's probably the most vulnerable video I've made since 2016 or 17 when I told my story about growing up fat. And that was hard for me because sometimes we just act on things not realizing there's a story behind it that informs it. There's a story that, um, that we are unconsciously moving in a way that doesn't serve us. And it's like someone had implanted a seed and we just moved accordingly, not realizing that seed was even there. So I'm now going back through adolescence and my teenhood and trying to understand why I act the way I do, why I hold back in certain ways. So um, this is me not holding back. Yeah, for so long, I was actually scared because of the rejection I faced from family. And I know a lot of people have and I, go, I do that thing where I, I invalidate my trauma or my uh, pain because I feel like someone else has been through worse. And all I can tell is my story, to be honest. And I hope that we can all understand, like, we're all processing things and going through things. And if we could just create more vulnerable, open space with each other, we could probably have a lot more healing. And so this is me sharing in that space. So I'm going to answer some questions um, that will kind of prompt the story along. Um, it'll probably be a bunch of Q&As over time because the story itself is just far too long to tell. I've tried to and I've ended up with one 10 minute video, one 16 minute video and not enough space on my phone. So this first question is, when did you know you were not straight? I'm going to say I knew very early on. I knew probably when I was about, I guess it was pre-K before, it was before kindergarten because I think I was in daycare. And I remember at nap time, there was this girl who was kind of a tomboy and we would always like kiss at nap time. We would always like bite each other's lips. We called it like vampire or something. We were like, you want to play vampire? And... <laughs> We would just like bite each other's lips. And so that was probably the beginning of it. And then around fifth grade, I had another friend. Um, I honestly don't remember who initiated what. I don't even know how we knew that both of us were attracted to the same sex, but we ended up kissing when she spent the night at my house and stuff. So, and it happened again. So it kind of just confirmed it for me. So over time, moments of confirmation happened. So over time, I had a crush. I remember I was supposed to be in computer camp, but I always ended up in the gym because it was that girl I had a crush on and my best friend was with me. We would just go into the gym and get in trouble, but we just didn't. Yeah, I had a crush and it was like, yeah, I want to be in there. Y'all know how that go. What impact has coming out had on your life personally? Hmm. The first or the second time? So the first time was in high school. Um, I never like formally came out until I realized like I was really, really in love with my first love. And I wanted to tell my parents. I wanted them to understand me and I wanted them to be a part of it. And I was like, I love her, I really do. And I want you to eventually meet her. And I wrote my dad a letter and he cried. And like, I let him read the letter in front of me because that was how I communicated with them. When it was really hard stuff I wanted to communicate, I would write a letter. I forgot about, it's like I suppressed so many memories from my whole coming out experience. So my dad cried and I was, I was so scared that I had like broke his heart. I thought it was the, I thought I had done 
the worst thing I could ever do to my dad that day. And later on as an adult, I understand after we've had conversations that he thought I was being manipulated. He was scared for me. He told me he knew what that lifestyle was like and he knew it wouldn't be easy. And he was just kind of like being protective. And I had to find a level of compassion for that. Like, okay, I get it. You've only seen one angle of this lifestyle. My mom also having her experiences, um, they brought that, they kind of like brought that to me. Unconsciously that does happen because we all have our own personal experiences that inform the way we show up in other ways. So I understood that um, having a level of grace with my family because yeah, I didn't know that it went deeper for them until later on in life. But I just knew like they could not, they kind of just ignored it for a while thinking, oh, it's just a phase, it'll pass. And shout out to the shirt because, oh. and I didn't even know that <laughs> back then um, because being rejected by your family, not just, I think my family, intermediate family wasn't the hard part. It was like my cousins and my grandmother, my mom's mom and my um, other family members who were so adamant about telling me what the Bible said or um, that that's not right because you'll go to hell and they burn down a whole city for that and da, 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 and like all these other things but not realizing there are variations of people like all black people don't act the same all white people don't act the same all gay people don't act the same all lesbians all like trans people don't act the same like and you can't pin that on one person so <sighs> um yeah so the first time coming out mostly with the under handed comments like I couldn't do that that's nasty and realizing like but that's a part of me and so internalizing that it made me suppress myself so for years um after me and my first love broke it off and I like dated a few girls after from pretty much the first year of college to what was last year 2019 to 2018 I pretty much suppressed it so it was what 2014 four years four years I just was like I'm gonna try to date guys because that seems to be the easier route my family can deal with that <laughs> yeah so that was that was hard the second time I'm 26 now it is what it is um it is what it is I haven't really necessarily received anything people just try to act like it's not happening and I'd rather you do that than to do what you did to me when I was 14 and 15 and 16. Um, so what impact has it had on your life publicly? I haven't publicly told anyone. It's not like I announced it. I didn't really feel the need to for a while because it's like, whose business is it? But then it's also like, why not? Why not? I feel like publicly, um, I'm a spoken word poet. That's what most of y'all know me for. Um, it hasn't really come up yet in my artistry because for so long I couldn't even talk about it. So what makes you think I can write about it? So that poem coming up will pretty much explain a lot of it. Um, it hasn't really had an impact, but then again, not many people know. So we'll get back to that question later. <laughs> Have you talked to others about their coming out process? Definitely. Definitely, because within the past year, um, I've talked to my friends about it because surprisingly, a lot of my friends also like are women who are attracted to women. And I didn't realize it, like even when I wasn't like out, out, I remember I was like asking them about it because it took their courage to inspire me to have the courage to live in truth and not try to make my family happy so yeah what prevented you from coming out earlier than you did Whew. what prevented me what prevented me was the comments from my family was the hearing them talk about mostly gay men a certain way or hearing the insults and 
in the comments about, oh, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. That's, mm -mm. I don't want no other woman on me. And I'm just like, did anybody ask you to put another woman on you? Like, calm down. And so I would just be like, why are they treating people like this? Not realizing later on, you realize people have their own trauma. They have their own experiences that inform who they are, just like me. <laughs> right and as a kid you don't know that as a teenager you don't know that people are taking out their own things on you you don't realize that isn't they're not they're not actually rejecting you all the time they're not disgusted by you they're there's a part of them that they are still processing or dealing with and it has nothing to do with you so um that's i'm gonna just say that note for anybody who's listening mm. another good one who did you come out to first and what was the experience like? Okay, so who did I come out to first? I probably, I think I came out to my sister first. And she was open-minded. She was receptive. She <laughs> didn't really care, but she also cared. Um, because my family treated her like she was the worst, you know? <laughs> like she was, she listened to rock music, hung out with white kids and like, you know smoked like you know a lot of things and so they judged based on that and so when I told her I remember her being like whoo well like oh finally they're gonna give me a break because you being a lesbian worse and I remember her making jokes about that and I'll just be like well now I really can't tell them so um she was really receptive and she became a really um she became really helpful in my process because I had somewhere to go. And not a lot of people have that one person, even if it's just one person, they don't always have that. And what tips can you give to those whose family or friends are coming out to them? I mean, I've had, I had someone come out to me recently, someone close to me. And the advice I would give is to just listen, accept them as they are. Don't try to change them. Um, accept them as they are. Listen, ask questions if you need clarity. Um, provide resources. Provide resources like a YouTube channel or just anything that you can give because we love, as a teenager, I wanted to find someone talking about this, someone telling their story, someone giving me advice on how to tell my family. Like, I was looking for that. So yeah, connect them with resources. There are so many resources we have now, so many safe spaces we have now for youth and for people who are older. We have spaces for it and we need to provide those resources to the young people who need it. And I'm leading by example because I surely do it with my students. We had a panel recently where one of my students, one of the panelists, um, Mo founded the Get Loud movement and literally one of my students was just like, can you be my mentor? And boom, my student has resources that they need to be successful and to process and to get through because the world don't make it easy at all. So we need each other. Is there anything that surprises you about your life after coming out versus before? Is there anything that surprises me? I think what surprises me is something I was so afraid of, um, I would say the second time around, now that I'm older, what surprises me is that all I needed was confidence. All I needed was valid self-validation. All I needed was a community that actually cared um, to help me through. All I needed was good friendship, which I, you know, at a young age, we're all just trying to help each other. But I am surprised at the courage I have to address my parents or my family. The courage I have to be myself, whether it has to do with my, uh, my sexuality or even my preference in clothes, preference in hair style whoever i show up as religion spirituality um 
I'm surprised at how I can show up as myself now. And even with judgment, find peace. Because my family knows I've been like this all my life. I've been the one where they're like, what is she doing now? I'm expressing myself. <laughs> and so, yeah. Are there any negative aspects to coming out? There's, um, there's the opinion of others. Uh, there is, it always has something to do with others. But when it comes to yourself, I don't think there are any negative aspects because, I mean, when you're younger, some people do get kicked out. I've heard that story far too often, far too often. Let me not, because uh, it pisses me off. Like, kicking your child out? Yeah. Anyway, um, are there any negative aspects to um, coming out? As far as yourself, I feel like if you honor yourself, then you can't be mad. At the end of the day, you're not silencing yourself. You're not doing what others had tried to do to you. They tried to silence you. They tried to make you be less of yourself because it made them uncomfortable. And realistically, when you make someone uncomfortable, they will voice it and do whatever it takes to put you back into that box. And so um, if you're honoring yourself, I don't see any negative aspects. But when it comes to others, if you are in a place where you still depend, um, we all depend on acceptance to some extent. But if you don't have a community, you don't have friends and you don't have some, other people to depend on you never know what you'll get from the the family or you never know and if it's positive oh oh i'm so happy for you like like genuinely happy i was watching this show and this girl came out to her mom and her mom is like wow you were hiding that from me that must have been really hard for you do you know how i cried cry i cried that's all it takes. You were hiding that for so long? Baby, that must have been really hard. Give me a hug. Period. That's it. How out are you? <laughs> I love that question. Um, do you come out to strangers? Do you practice PDA? If so, uh, how out are you? Well, more out than I've ever been. Let's say that. Even if it's not as out as other people. Um, it hasn't shown up in my artistry yet because I'm still processing the emotions behind it. Um, but when it comes to PDA with my ex, oh, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. I had my leg up on her out sitting at the park. It was fine. I loved it. Um, I don't feel the need to come out to strangers unless the topic comes up. But other than that, I just connect to people. We just connect and um I don't have to tell you every time you know like I don't have to but if we have the conversation yeah I'll tell you um yeah that's that this is the last question I'm answering and hopefully this thing stays on um does internalized or external homophobia still impact you if so how I'm gonna close with this question because this is probably the most vulnerable for me because um, internalized homophobia or external. Woo, let's go. So internalized homophobia definitely impacts me because um, it's like I don't even want to say certain words too loud. I don't even want to offend my family. I don't want to really like have conversations with them about certain things. If they make comments, I try not to to act too defensive. And just certain things like that. Like I'm I'm still not showing up at 100% yet because of internalized homophobia, because of um, being ridiculed by the people I love the most and care about the most, like cousins who feel like sisters. I talk about that in my poem too. But um, just, for so long, I suppressed even being attracted to women because of that feeling, because of that feeling of rejection, 
um, losing a level of trust or intimacy with my family because of it. And I just, I remember just not wanting to rock the boat because I wanted them close. I love being around my family. I love being around like the kids in my family. Like we all have a good time together and I'm like the cool aunt. So like, I was also afraid that, you know, because a lot of people are paranoid when it comes to the LGBTQ plus community um, about kids. And it's like, no, the kids will be fine. Literally, kids will just ask you questions and be like, hey, so what's up? And then if you just pretty much be like, okay, so this is it. And they go on about their business. Like, so external, I would say that is, that was my answer for external because it came from other people. Internalized, I think I just deal with their, their, opinions playing in my head and I deal with um not wanting to hurt their feelings not wanting to embarrass them and all these feelings that I felt as a teenager they're resurfacing and I'm trying to process and get through and just kind of rid myself of that because it doesn't serve who I am it doesn't serve who I'm becoming it it just silences me I can't even create or I can't paint certain things or 